So this time is a little bit overkill, but it'll cover pretty much everything you need it for. So we've got milliseconds all the way up to days. So days, hours, minutes, seconds, milliseconds. We've got stop, we can restart it and go again. So let's get into it. So make a new node 2D and I want that to be called main. We're gonna add in a little background, you don't have to. Then a label, I've called mine timer label because it's gonna be our timer. Then we've got three buttons, which is our button start, stop, and reset. So I'm not going to go over about anchors and layouts and stuff like that. That's not the point of this tutorial. We're going to focus just on the code. So on your label, I want you to add a new script. I've already done that. I'm going to do this, and I'm just going to get rid of this. And this is going to be our time, so how much time has passed, and timer on. So are we doing the timer, or is it stopped? Now you'll notice we've got three buttons here. I want them to all link up to this script. So we're going to do that now. So go to your button start node signals and pressed in your timer label and do the same for the other two so when the start button is pressed we want the time to be on when it's stopped we want it to be off and when we reset we want time pass to be back to zero to do the time we're going to have to update the time on the process so by default, this is going to be off until we press the button start. But when we press the button start, we're going to time plus equals delta. The reason we're using delta is because if your computer is really fast, your time would increase really quickly. And if it was slow, it would increase really slowly. Delta makes sure that time between frames are always accurate between different computers. So this line is just for demonstration purposes. I'm going to press play now and press start. You'll notice this is what the time is going to be, and we need to format that in a way that's readable to a human eye. So that's what we're going to focus on next. So to extract mins and seconds, we use something called fmod. Let's go to that now. So if we read this, it's return on the float remainder of a divided by b, keeping the sign of a. That's kind of hard to just understand. So let's go back to the script. When time is updated, you'll notice that it was updating almost in seconds. So we know that there is 60 seconds in a minute. So in seconds, we don't want it to be, say, 71 seconds. So using the fmod, we can make sure that this wouldn't ever go to, say, 61, 62, 63. It should go back to zero, and that's what this will do. If I was to change 60 to 70, it would actually go all the way from 61 up to 70, and once it goes past to 71, it would actually be zero. So minutes is a lot more complicated. We've got 60 times 60 divided by 60. It's, it's hard to understand. So we know that there's 60 seconds in a minute and 60 minutes in an hour. And what I'm going to do is divide it by 60. So what will happen is when minutes goes to 61, it'll go back to zero again. Before we process the rest, like the days, minutes, and hours, uh, we're just going to make sure this works first. So time pass is actually a string and what we're going to do is get the minutes and seconds and we're going to format them so it makes sense. So you can see 0, 2, so we'd have minutes can't be 103 for example. The same with seconds, get the text off the label and set it to this string. Let's make sure it works. So if I press start, wait for one second, there we go. I'm not going to wait for a full minute, but yeah, trust me it does work and we'll do a demonstration later. So let's do milliseconds. If I'm being 100% honest, I don't understand how this works, but it does work and um, I found it in a form. If I find the link I'll put in the description below. Let's update time passed. And because milliseconds can have three places, we want to do the three D. Let's make sure that works. So this is basically the tutorial. This is what most people want, right? We want to have the milliseconds, the seconds, and the minutes, and that's it. So I'm going to carry on. Project will be in the description below. So let's continue. So let's do hours. And as you see, it's quite a bit of a beast. So this highlighted section is actually 60 times 60 is 360. So we know that's an hour and we know that it is 60 minutes inside an hour. Then we're going to divide it by an hour. So it's the same as this one above, but instead of minutes, we're doing hours. In this F mod, because we don't want it to go over 24, it should go back to 00, zero we put 24 here. And finally, day. So this number here is actually 3,600 times by itself. And then this number is actually 3,600 times 24. So you, what's happening is for every 24 hours, day is increased by one. So let's include a day in hours. So at the beginning, we wanna just copy and paste this. So reading this, this is day, hour, minute, second, millisecond. So let's do that here. Now if we press play, the only way of knowing if it's going to work right is if we wait for a full day. However, we don't want to do that, so we can actually emulate this. So one way of doing that is that we change the time from zero to a number, right? We know this is an hour, at least it should be. So to make sure hours working, what you do is do this. We want to give ourselves five seconds, so... So this should be five seconds till it's a full hour. Let's play it. As you can see, we've got five seconds. 
and sure enough our hour increased. So that's great, we know minutes that was working, we know hours working, now we need to make sure day's working. So of course this is our day, let's change it so it's got five seconds again. And sure enough we've got five seconds, let's just run, the, run it down. Brilliant, so we can see it's working, so let's stop that and go again. So that concludes the end of this tutorial. I hope it's helpful and I will do a follow up on this one, how to do leaderboards, how to save and so on. So I hope to see you in the next one. Bye bye.